Hello, and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to recap the film Nowhere, which was released in the year 2023. As we dissect the story, characters, and pivotal events in this movie, you should get ready to enter the mesmerizing realm of Nowhere. Take a load off, unwind, and savor the moment. The first scene of the film in a society where there is a deficiency in fundamental resources, governments will begin to collapse all over the place. The country of Spain and its surrounding countries fell under the control of a totalitarian regime. In order to alleviate the shortages, the regime carried out the genocide of the young, the elderly, and pregnant women. After the death of their daughter, Umama, a pregnant lady whose name is Mia and her husband Nico, make the decision to leave the country and go to Ireland, where the dictatorship has been rejected by the residents of that country. Mia and Nico sell everything they own and give it to the people who smuggle refugees into Ireland in shipping containers. They pay these people with the money they get from the sale of their belongings. While there is room for them within the container, Mia and Nico are not able to travel together because they are separated even before their journey begins. Mia and Nico may continue to communicate with one another even though Nico has been moved to a different container because both of them have their phones with them. When the ships arrive at the port, the authorities search each container and during the search of Mia's container, an officer discovers that there are individuals hidden within. Mia is the only survivor which she manages to hide herself by climbing up on a crate as the others are killed by gunfire. When the container finally makes it to the ship, Mia is the only one who has survived. Nevertheless, her container is lost at sea because of the storm. After suffering an injury, Mia comes to the realization that she is currently out at sea with no sign of land in sight. There are holes in the container, so water is constantly and gradually making its way inside. Mia is relieved to discover that Nico is still alive after she finally manages to cover up the holes. It is revealed that Nico did not arrive at the port when he phones her. His truck driver tricked him and the others, leaving them behind in the city instead of taking them to the port. When Mia finally gets a hold of Nico, she fills him in on what transpired and he assures her that he will locate a method to rescue her. Mia gives birth to her daughter all by herself and gives her the name Noah, which was the name that Nico had selected for the baby before Mia went into labor. However, because the screen on Mia's phone is broken, she is unable to reach Nico. Because she can still take calls, she has no choice but to wait for Nico to get in touch with her. Mia is aware that in order for her and her kid to live until Nico finds them, she must survive. Aside from what the individuals were already taking with them, the container does not contain any food or water. After a few days had passed, Mia is left without any food or drink and she quickly begins to starve and become dehydrated. Mia makes an effort to break open the container so that she can escape. She uses a drill to make holes in the container's top in order to open a space that will allow her to climb out, but the task proves to be more difficult than she had anticipated due to a number of different causes. After that, Mia consumes some of her own umbilical cord and obtains water when rainwater enters the house through the holes that she drilled earlier in the process. At long last, Maya finds some strength inside herself and is able to open a doorway. Now that Mia and Noah have access to some daylight, they can go look for assistance. Additionally, Mia fashions a fishing net out of the numerous materials included within the container by using them in conjunction with one another. She is then able to reel in fish at which point she is no longer required to go hungry. In addition, despite the challenges she is facing, Mia finds strength from NOA. Mia engages in conversation with her and even discloses to her the circumstances behind the passing of Yuma, which Mia reasons were her fault. Mia has already been through the pain of losing a daughter, and the prospect of doing so again compels her to keep fighting for Noah's sake. Since Mia became stranded inside the container, it has been a total of 12 days. It appears that things are not going so well for baby Noah, and Nico has not gotten in touch with Mia in days to see about getting to his pregnant wife. 
Nico boards a ship covertly and hides there, but he is discovered and killed in the process of his escape. Nico gives Mia a call to say goodbye and to break the news to her that he will not be able to save her, despite the fact that he has tried his best to do so. Nico finds out about the birth of Noah via Mia, and he is able to communicate with his daughter for the first and last time. Because Nico is concerned about the welfare of his wife and daughter, he asks me to guarantee that she will emerge from this situation unscathed. After living in a container for a total of 26 days, because Mia is unable to keep the water out any longer, she and Noah are going to have to live on top of the container. The container is almost totally submerged in water, and all the photographs that Mia had kept of her family have been destroyed. Mia enters the container in an attempt to rescue Yuma's photograph when she notices that it is floating, but she becomes trapped within. By the time she makes it out of the container, which is at this point totally submerged in water, the baby has already begun to drown, which causes Noah's makeshift cradle to slide off the top. Mia is unable to locate Noah during the night, despite her repeated efforts to do so by shouting his name. She is frustrated by this lack of success. Noah is surrounded by a whale, and the whale causes Noah to be splashed with water, causing her to start crying. They are not harmed by the whale, and Noah's words are what enable Mia to locate her. Even though Mia is able to locate Noah after the container has been submerged, the two of them are currently adrift in the ocean with nothing to support them other than Noah's cradle. They do not have access to food, water, or any other requirements. Mia is aware that if they do not locate assistance in a timely manner, they will not survive for a very long time. They are both dreadfully shivering, and Noah is running a fever. Mia shares with Noah the story of how she was helped by her and how it gave her the will to live. Mia is under the impression that she has done everything that she can to save them. Mia observes that there are seagulls flying around, which is a sign that an island is located in the area. Mia decides to throw away what's left of her umbilical cord by throwing it into the ocean as a last ditch effort. This causes a large number of seagulls to congregate around them, which catches the notice of a passing fishing boat. Noah is saved after being discovered by a fisherwoman who, together with her father and son, had been fishing at the time. Mia, on the other hand, ends up drowning, but because she has attached herself to Noah's cradle, the fisherwoman is able to save her. Mia's life was saved by a fisherwoman who performed cardiopulmonary resuscitation on her. Because Mia and Noah require immediate medical assistance, the fisherwoman's father dials the number for the emergency services. Noah sees the fisherwoman's son, which is a clear indication that the dictatorship is no longer in place. As soon as Mia understands that she and Noah have arrived safely in Ireland, she bursts into tears of joy. And that's the end of this recap. Make sure to subscribe, share, and comment. Remember, your engagement and support keep us motivated. Thanks for staying till the end. See you at the next one.